So it's Saturday the 13th of March here in Sydney, Australia, and I'm currently on day four of a mandatory 14-day quarantine that is required for anyone entering Australia from overseas. If I had arrived as operating crew on our aircraft, I could do this quarantine at home as the rules are different for flight crews. But since I arrived as a regular passenger with the airlines, I had to come to one of the government approved hotels. This one is located in the city and that's the view across to Darling Harbour. It's quite a comfortable apartment, plenty of time to watch movies. Last Wednesday my wife dropped off some supplies including this monitor so I was able to set up a desk and operate as I would do at home. The kitchen is fairly well appointed and they deliver three meals a day. In fact, they just delivered dinner. I usually get a knock on the door. I have to wait 20 seconds and then I can collect the meals. There's a little Mavic Mini 2. I picked it up in the USA just before returning home. 14 days, watching movies, barely an inconvenience. So let's get down to business. This is a countdown timer to the March equinox. As you can see, it will occur in just over seven days time. The equinox is when the sun is directly over the Earth's equator. For six months of the year, the sun is over the northern hemisphere. For the other six months, it is over the southern hemisphere. The sun will cross the equator twice each year, once in September and once in March. And when that occurs, we call it the equinox. And the reason we have the two equinoxes each year is due to the tilt of the Earth and the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. As we know, the Earth tilts at just over 23 degrees, and as it orbits the Sun, that angle really doesn't change. But what is changing is the orientation of the Earth's tilt with respect to the Sun. You can see here, during the summer solstice, the North Pole is tilted closer towards the Sun. During the winter solstice, it is the South Pole that is facing closer towards the Sun. During the two equinoxes, the vernal equinox and the autumnal equinox, the tilt is neither towards or away from the Sun, and therefore it has absolutely no effect on the Sun's apparent movement across the sky. Now this geometry creates a very interesting situation that allows us to observe the Sun moving in a straight line from sunrise to sunset. It only happens on the day of the equinox. On any other day, we see a curve in the path of the Sun. Now to understand why this is so, we need to consider a circle. A circle is round, I think we can all agree on that. But if you are located directly at the centre of that circle and looking at its edge, you will only see a straight line. Let me demonstrate. So this is one of my earlier videos where I used a hula hoop to demonstrate that the sun is moving in a straight line on the day of the equinox. We know that the hula hoop is curved, but if we look at that hoop edge on, we only see a straight line. And again, from the center of that hoop looking in any direction, we can only see the hoop as a straight line. On the day of the equinox, if you orientate that hoop at an angle from vertical equal to your latitude and hold it up to the sun, the sun will actually trace a path exactly along the edge of the hula hoop. With your eye at the center, that appears to be a straight line and that is exactly the path that the sun will appear to follow. And another way to demonstrate this is with an app called Sun Surveyor which shows the path of the sun as it would appear from any location on Earth on any day of the year. It is currently set to Sydney, Australia on the day of the equinox. The observer's position is this green icon and because he is located at the center of the circle, the motion of the sun will appear to be in a straight line. We can see that clearly if we look edge on to the circle. Now this is only true on the day of the equinox. 
during other times of the year, the observer is no longer at the centre of this circle and therefore they will see curve in the path of the sun. This is in the Sydney summer and this is in the Sydney winter where the sun is lower in the sky, the days are shorter but again the observer is not at the centre of that circle. It is only on the day of the equinox that the sun appears to move in a straight line. Another way to demonstrate this is with an equatorial plate sundial. Now this is an interesting design and it needs to be polar aligned in the same way that an equatorial mount for a telescope is aligned. The equatorial plate sundial has a plate with time markings on either side and a central gnomon which is what actually casts the shadow. Now this gnomon needs to be oriented according to latitude. At the equator it will be horizontal. At the poles it will be vertical and in between the angle is going to match the latitude. What is interesting about this design is that for six months of the year one side of the plate will be in sunlight while the other is in shadow. For the other six months the opposite side is in sunlight while the first side remains in shadow. The changeover occurs on the two equinoxes, one in March and one in September and on those days neither side of this plate will receive sunlight because the sun is directly in line with the edge of the sundial plate. And another interesting fact is that the time scale is spaced at 15 degrees for every hour because we know that the Earth rotates at a steady 15 degrees per hour with respect to the Sun. And because this gnomon is aligned with the Earth's rotational axis, the sundial itself is rotating at the same 15 degrees per hour. And that is why we see the shadow reliably indicating the correct time throughout the day. So we'll take a look at a real equatorial sundial shortly, but I just want to make you aware of this website blocklayer.com. Here you can print a template to create your own equatorial sundial and it also has a nice graphic that helps us visualize the orientation of the sundial with respect to the Earth's rotational axis. Here is the sundial and you will notice that the gnomon will always remain parallel to the Earth's rotational axis no matter where we are on the surface of the Earth. As we move from the equator to the pole, the orientation of the sundial is not changing with respect to this axis. The lower part of this graphic is showing the sundial as it would appear to an observer at each location. On the equator the sundial surface plate is vertical and the gnomon is horizontal. As we move to the poles that plate becomes horizontal and the gnomon is vertical. At any intermediate latitude, the angle is going to be proportional to the latitude. It also shows us the position of the sun. On the equinox, the sun is directly in line with the sundial plate. For six months of the year, it is to one side, and for the other six months, it is positioned on the other side. And that explains the alternating six months of illumination and shadow on the sundial. So here is an equatorial sundial that I built from a kit purchased on eBay for about $10. As you can see, the time scale represents 24 hours in 360 degrees. That is 15 degrees per hour, the same rate at which the Earth rotates. Each side of the plate is labelled. This one, Southern Hemisphere, and the other side, Northern Hemisphere. When the Sun is above the Northern Hemisphere for six months, only this side of the sundial will be illuminated. For the other six months, when the sun is over the southern hemisphere, this side of the sundial will be illuminated. During the two equinoxes, the sun will travel directly around the edge of the sundial itself. Now I'm currently located in the southern hemisphere and I've built the sundial accordingly. If I was in the northern hemisphere, I would have to flip this plate over for it to function correctly. This sundial has to be polar aligned 
just like an equatorial mount. And that means this orientation is towards the north and the gnomon is pointing up towards the south celestial pole. Without that correct orientation, it's not going to work. And this is how the sundial arrives in kit form. It is laser cut wood. It contains glue, a compass and instructions. It literally takes less than five minutes to assemble and the longest part is just waiting for the glue to dry. So I'll put it together now. So here is the sundial fully assembled and I have a number of clamps just to hold those two surfaces together while the glue dries. And this is what the sundial would look like if I was located on the equator. The gnomon is horizontal and the plate is vertical. So let's now revise the three key points. Number one, this equatorial sundial proves that the sun moves in a straight line on the day of the equinox. Number two, regardless of the position on the earth, for six months, one side of the sundial will be illuminated while the opposite side is in shadow. And every six months, those sides alternate. And three, the only way this sundial will tell the time accurately is if it is rotating at a steady 15 degrees per hour. Because it is attached to the earth, which is in fact doing that, the sundial works correctly. Unfortunately, based on past experiences with flat earthers and the equinox, I don't think any of them are going to understand this. The geometry of what I have just demonstrated is quite impossible on a flat earth. And I think most of us can see that very clearly. But for some reason, flat earthers are geometry blind. Let's see how many of them turn up in the comments and prove that they completely missed the point of this video.